everyone, and welcome to this edition of the Michael Voris Show. This is going to be the first of four parts that we're doing that are pretty theological and kind of scary uh, and also joyful at the end as we're getting into Holy Week here and all of that. We're going to be talking about death, judgment, hell, and heaven. The church calls those the four last things today because they are the last things for every human being. Uh, we're going to be talking about death today, but first, just before we get into that, we want to uh, alert you to the fact that uh, we have made here at Church Militant a very limited to di- limited edition of these little guys. This is a uh, holy mackerel bobblehead. Uh, we've sold quite a few already, so we're just sort of giving them the final push here. Those of you who've been around uh, Church Militant for a while will recognize this guy. It's kind of a annoying if you try to eat meat on Friday during Lent, he suddenly appears and well, let's just say the meat never actually gets to your mouth. Again, it's a hundred dollar donation. We're asking for each one of them in limited edition. They'll come with their own little number on them. And uh, at this point, we have no intentions of making any more. So it's grab them now or lose them forever. <laughs> all righty. So we're going to be talking about death today. Um, yeah, you know, I might just skip over all the normal stuff. Everybody's terrified of death. You know, that's why you have all your reflex reactions if you're in a car. If you think death is coming, all of a sudden some quick thing, you're, you're like, well, what is death? Death is the separation of the body and the soul. <clears throat> now, it's extremely important to focus on this because the soul, while it is created to be immortal, is joined to the body here on earth and knows no existence outside of the body. So when the moment arrives, the horror of, now that's why we're terrified of death, because we don't have any experience. Our souls have no experience of life apart from the body. Think about this union of body and soul. When our soul is happy, uh, our body laughs. When our soul is sad, our body cries. When you're enthused by something, you get goosebumps. The body is the soul's mechanism for expressing itself. Good, bad, sad, whatever the case is. Uh, that's how we're joined together. We, we are a composite of body and soul. When the soul leaves the body and the body goes and turns into dust and you know, essentially food for worms... The soul doesn't have any concept of what's awaiting it. It ha- does have a very generic concept, but nowhere near the reality because it doesn't have any experience of it. So all of a sudden, when the soul leaves the body, what what's going on there? Well, it sort of springs into a new universe that it has no experience of. In a very kind of minimalistic way, think about a baby in the womb coming out into life outside the womb. It has no experience of that. It doesn't know cold. It doesn't know hunger. It doesn't know any of those things. It's not natural to it while it's in the womb. Then all of a sudden it's born and there's some big guy's hands are pulling it by the feet and smacking it on the butt and it's cold and he's hungry and he's being swung around and, and he's like, what's going on? You know, fortunately, we don't ever have a memory of any of that. But there's that experience of moving from one type of experience into one you have no experience of. Now, here's the very important part. Not only is death in its own horrifying, of course it's horrifying, what is even more important to think about is this is the moment that Satan has his last opportunity to get you. And he knows that. He knows you've, you are always going to die at some point. He doesn't know when you're going to die, but he knows that you're going to die. And because of that, he saves his worst attacks for you for this very moment. He knows this is it. He gets you now or he loses you forever. So what is he playing on? What is he trying to get you to do? He's ultimately trying to get you to despair of God. So you think about sin. When we have a sin, a temptation come in front of us, what, what is that? It's, it's like, oh, it's okay. Oh, God understands. It's, uh, it's not that bad. That's what he's telling you. That's, he presents the temptation to you and then helps you rationalize it, helps us rationalize the sin. So he blunts the effect of the sin, the reality, the consequences, the truth of the sin. He blunts that, makes you sort of not think about that, and uh, so you'll commit the sin. Well, over the course of somebody's lifetime, 
all of those sins, all of that stuff that we have all done and not done when we were supposed to have done, because that's a sin too, a sin of omission, which is probably in some cases greater than most people's uh, sins of commission is a sin of omission for the things that I did not do that I should have done. Not go to mass on Sunday, not, uh, not love my neighbor, not love God, not all of the, all of the nots. Uh, that we should have done that did not do. Those are all sins also. You don't have to actively do something. You can actively not do something, choose not to do something you should. That too is just as sinful. There you are on your deathbed. Your soul is still with the body, but is very much aware that it's about to spring into something different. And it's terrified of life without the body. It has no idea what it's about to experience. It knows it's going to experience something. It's not going to just go into oblivion. And at that very moment, Satan, which the name means accuser, is right there with his demons, accusing you of everything you have ever done in your life. Every sin you've committed, omission or commission, bringing it all up to you, whatever your particular weakness is, all of the... He was there. He was the one who tempted you to those moments. He's very aware of our millions of sins over the course of our life. And here he is holding them all out for you at this very moment to get you to despair of the mercy of God. Now, if you're in a state of mortal sin, which... Let's be honest, most people probably are when they die. You do not have the life of the Holy Trinity present in you. It's not there. And so you are kind of given over to the demons by your own choice. You don't have any operating grace inside you to call upon. This is why we pray in the Hail Mary, pray for us now and at the hour of our death, that hour of our death. That's why we pray for a good, holy death because at that moment all the powers of hell come against you that's it he's after your soul he's got one more chance that's it so the idea of death isn't just in the natural sense of being horrified of dying and you know i mean just all sort of even just the natural instinct you want to run away from death uh uh you know the the it's i mean that's just so obvious and you have to explain it everybody knows it from our own life experience But it's not just on that natural level, like, oh my gosh, the way this is is going to come to an end. It's also what's happening there at that moment of death. You're laying in your deathbed or you're laying there, you've had a car accident and you've got a few moments left to live. And all of a sudden, you bet, Satan is coming after you with every single thing he's got, every sin you've ever committed, everything. You know, you, you know, you, you hate God. You shouldn't be with God. God doesn't want you. You know, you can't possibly be worthy of God. Look at this sin you committed. Remember this thing you did when you were 14? Remember this? Look at this. Look at this. Hey, remember that? Remember that affair? All that stuff. It's all coming at you at full force. If you haven't prepared during the course of your life to be able to Fight off that temptation, ultimately the temptation to despair. I'm not worthy. Look at all of my sins. There's no way God can forgive me. That's, what, that's why Judas killed himself, and that's why he's in hell. He despaired of the mercy of God. But you have to have like lived your life in a certain way. For the most part, can there be some miraculous deathbed conversion? Yeah, but every saint said don't count on that. Don't count on that. You have to be disposed to be able to receive the grace of final penitence, to be able, you have to have worked on this your whole life. You know, for people who are athletes, you don't just go win a gold medal because you showed up at the last second, you know, without ever having done anything, you know, training or a little bit of training and, you know, not eating what you should have eaten, just, you know, lived your, you know, didn't show up to practices, nothing. And then here you are against the most formidable enemy that you could ever imagine, competition you could ever imagine. You really think you're going to beat them? So this is the part of why the spiritual life is so important. It's not just to remain close to God. I mean, ultimately, that's it. It's because when temptation comes, you have to have some bit of, uh, you got to have reserve in the tank to be able to fight off that temptation. And no temptation that you have ever had in your life is going to be as ferocious and raging and ravaging as the moment of your death. Because he has to bring everything against you because his clock has run out with you also. So death, yeah, horrifying on just the natural level, even more horrifying on the supernatural level. You have got to be prepared for that moment 
because every sin you've ever committed will be visited right in your face. He will be accusing you, telling you to despair. And if you don't have the, the, the wherewithal, the spiritual wherewithal, you are going to give in to that despair because it's the only sort of natural thing for you to do. So the next one we're going to be talking about is going to be judgment after this has happened and you have died and the soul has separated from the body, then you're escorted to the judgment seat of God. And that's what we'll be talking about next. Just a reminder that these shows, the uh, Michael Vore show and Christine's Forward Boldly show and Simon's Hardline show in April, will be switching over to premium. So at some point during the show, you'll be asked to go over and uh, finish watching it if you want to finish watching it uh, by being a premium member. That is it for now. God love you.